Welcome again, and today we're going to tackle a very interesting topic. We're going to look at um, African trypanosomiasis, commonly known as a sleeping sickness. Okay, I think this image is basically showing somebody sleeping, but uh, get it from me, the sleeping is normally not this easy. There's normally a lot of irritability going on. Okay, so uh, before I look at um, African trypanosomiasis per se, we have to look at basically the generally trypanosomiasis. Um, we have the African type and we have the American type. Uh, the African type, as we know, is the one that causes sleeping sickness. The American uh, trypanosomiasis causes the disease, the Chagas disease. Okay, and that one is called uh, actually the the, um, the vector is the triatomoid bug. Okay or the kissing bug as it is known. So we have to know that there are differences between those. And the African trypanosomiasis is basically different from uh, um, the American trypanosomiasis. Okay, so just to uh, basically introduce ourselves to the, to the concept is that trypanosomiasis is basically, uh, the African trypanosomiasis is a tropical disease that is caused by a protozoa. Okay, the schistos no, sorry, not the schistosomes, the trypanosomes, the uh, protozoas, these are parasites uh, that normally uh, will be found in blood. So the African trypanosomiasis is, is also commonly known as the sleeping sickness. So to, to look at the vector itself, because these are vector-borne disease, the vector is um, the sessa fly, commonly known as the glossina fly. Okay, that is a scientific name but it's called the sessa fly. Uh, I've told you it's different. The vector for, for the American trypanosomiasis is uh, the triatomite bug. So, so specifically, the, the type of sessa flies that um, uh, are common with the, the African trypanosomiasis, we have two common types, and this is the glossina palpalis and the glossina mositans. So it's important. Uh, these types of... Um, Obsessive flies are found in two different kind of uh, geographical locations with different characteristics. Okay, like for one is found in um, riverine areas or areas with rivers. Another one is found in the um, woodland woodland areas. So we will look and, and they transmit different kinds of uh, African trypanosomiasis. So Glossina palpalis and Glossina mositans are the, are the vectors. <coughs> So the specific causative organism, or basically the parasite itself, uh, so Trypanosoma brucei is the strain of 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 of, uh, of this trypanosome that causes um, African trypanosomiasis or sleeping sickness. So we have the different species of the brucei. Okay, so we have Trypanosoma brucei gabiense which is basically uh, found in the Western and Central African regions. And this one causes some slow progressing um, disease. And ultimately, this is uh, what, what leads to sleeping sickness. Okay. And then we have the Trypanosoma brucerodinsiense. Um, then this one is normally um, found in the Eastern and Southern Africa regions. And this one causes an acute disease, which now most, most of the time it leads to a cardiac complication. So this one is acute form. So if you realize the Trypanosoma bruce gabiense, this is sometimes called the Gambian um, Trypanosomiasis, uh, is mostly found in the western and central region of Africa. So sleeping sickness will not be common in East Africa, for example, Southern Africa. Okay, uh, but this one is common in the western region of Africa and central Africa. While the cardiac complications would be common in the eastern region and southern Africa, and most of the time we would not even know because we know the name is supposed to be sleeping sickness, but this person has a cardiac complication. Okay, so uh, as you can see, we have the, these are the, the trypanosomes that we're talking about, and they, they are they're actually in the blood supply here. Okay, so they are the ones that cause uh, the disease. We have an interesting type. We have a type of asoma bruce bruce, okay, that's also a different strain of bruce, and uh, that one causes nagana, but that is in animals, not in human beings. Okay, so you've, you you must have heard of the of the disease nagana. That one is caused by the trypanosoma bruce bruce, and uh, that's an animal kind of trypanosomiasis. Okay, so the two 
common causative organisms. We have Trypanosoma bruce gabiense and Trypanosoma bruce rhodesiense. So just to look at the pattern and the causation of this disease is that the reservoir for rhodesiense, the Trypanosoma bruce rhodesiense, is mostly found in the bushbugs. The bushbugs are animals that they almost look like antelopes, but they have these long, long uh, horns and stuff. Okay, the um, trypanosomiasis affect both humans and cattle. Okay, for rhodesiense, obviously, even gabiense. But in gabiense, the reservoirs include antelopes and pigs. Okay, so those are some of the uh, reservoirs, but they can also cross over to uh, to uh, human beings. Um, so for palpalis, we talked about. Um, this kind of sessile fly. So palpalis, Glossina palpalis, is a riverine type which breeds along rivers and lakes. Okay. Um, then we have mositans. Mositans, Glossina mositans, this type of um, sessile fly is found in the woodland, type, woodland types which lives away from water. So if, if, if you think of it, um, the riverine, most rivers are found in maybe Central Africa and, and, and West Africa. So we expect then the Glossina palpalis to be more prevalent or to be uh, more populated in the western and central regions of Africa. And therefore, you expect gl uh, Glossina palpalis to be carrying, that is the one that is actually propagating uh, Trypanosoma bruce gambiense, okay? The Gambian type. Gambia is in central and western regions, those sides of Africa. And then Mositans, because of woodland, okay? Mostly that, that one is in Eastern and Southern Africa. Those are the areas that are woodland. Okay, so what we're trying to talk about is this, the Gambian or Western form of um, trypanosomiasis, the red section. You can see this is the Western side of Africa and some part of Central Africa. Okay, uh, but uh, you can see this, the Gambian type also comes into almost Uganda. Okay, so Uganda mostly like has both types. It might have both the, 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 the Gambian type and the, basically the Western type and, 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 and the Eastern type. So the rhodesian or East African form is this one, the blue one that is affecting the Eastern Africa and Southern regions of Africa. Okay, so it's good we know uh, these, these two types. So as I said, the palpalis will carry the Gambian, uh, the Gambian type, the Trypanosoma bruce gambiense, the Mositans, the main vector for Rodentiese, okay? Uh, so therefore, the Rodentiese is common in East and Central Africa, East and Southern Africa, the Gambian type, or the Trypanosoma bruce gambiense is common in Western African and Central Africa. So one more thing you should know, and this one we'll also look at when we look at prevention, it's important to know that sessile fly is normally attracted by the smell of urine from animals. So like that's why in, in, in bushy areas or in games, game parks when these animals are actually urinating around and everywhere, that one will attract the sessile fly. Okay. By the way, there's a fly trap for sessile flies and the way they, they prepare the fly trap is that they put some sort of urine from these animals and then they set up a trap. So when the sessile fly is attracted, they come and they want to like, um, when they're attracted to this urine, then they're trapped into this uh, fly trap. So now that we've looked at the distribution of this disease, uh, now, in terms of transmission, how does it, the transmission is basically easy and, and straightforward. So sessile fly becomes, um, a sessile fly, okay, this vector becomes infected when the sleeping sickness parasite or the, uh, or the trypanosomes, uh, when they take a blood meal, when these cells will take a blood meal from this infected person or human. Remember we said they can reside both in humans or these animals like deer, bushbucks and all those. Okay, so when this cell fly comes and takes a, a blood meal, in the blood we have these trypanosomes. So after a period now in the body of the cell fly, it undergoes developmental changes, not so much changes, but maybe from, um, um, we have different forms of trypanosomes, okay, like trypa, uh, uh, trypomastigot, or we have epimastigot. So those are the transformations that happen. So 
maybe they, they just transform from a procyclic to a metacyclic at uh, pomastic good. But what is important is, you know, all these forms of trypanosomes, they just undergo developmental changes. Then this fly now, when it's taking a bite from another um, animal or person who is not infected, that they transmit the infection to that new uh, host. Okay. So this is basically what you're talking about, is that this human being is affected or is basically is infected with the uh, type of somniasis, and then the sensor like comes and takes the, the meal, okay? Or it can be also, it can be taking it from the human being or taking it from the games. Then the other way around, now it will look for another human being and inject it, uh, or look for another animal game and uh, inject it, okay? So the injection of this uh, chat, uh, 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 trypanosomes is the one that causes uh, the propagation of the cycle. So this one is a um, more comprehensive one, but will not focus at, uh, at large. The point is, is this sesame fly is taking a blood meal, and it has that uh, trypomastic good. That is a form of the trypan trypanosomes that we're talking about, and injects it into the skin or the body of the human uh, uh, of the of the human being. It goes to the blood supply. Okay, as a metacyclic tripomastic goat, just some few changes, divides, become so much. And then the another sesame fly comes, takes a blood meal. Okay, then it receives the tripomastic goats. Okay, and then this now starts uh, transforming into procyclic tromastic goat, and then epimastic goat, and then epimastic goat finally becomes a metacyclic trip, a tripomastic goat. But the point is, it's this issue of tripomastic goat, epimastic goat, not very important. What is important for now is for you to understand that basically you get uh, you get these trypanosomes into the, your body or into your bloodstream. It divides. Another sesame fly comes, takes the blood meal. The blood meal has the trypanosomes. Now the trypanosomes now undergo changes, developmental changes. Those are the ones that we are calling the tripomastic goat, procyclic, tripomastic goat, epimastic goat. Those are the changes. Those are the developmental changes. And then once they have developed fully, then they are, again, uh, uh, they inject another animal or inject another human being. Okay? So that's quite straightforward. So after all this, expect now some disease process to take place. So the early stages of this uh, trypanosomiasis is mostly like starts like any inflammatory uh, process and, and because the, the, the protozoa or the trypanosomes are foreign beings, okay, they are antigens basically, and they will cause the body to start having this reaction. So you will have fever, obviously, headaches, malaise, weight loss, muscle and joint pains, pruritals, anemia, skin rashes, and deep, so these are, and deep hyperesthesia, hyperesthesia. Uh, which now is what we call uh, the Carandel sign. So basically what we're saying here is that um, you start having some general kind of signs and symptoms which you can't really place and say that this is trypanosomes. So normally at this stage, we'll not be able to pinpoint the problem. Uh, we, we, we might just say it is because you can attribute fever, headache, malaise to so many kinds of diseases. So however, the clinical features of trypanosomes is now depend on the inf infecting parasite, okay? So, so, so for us to be able to differentiate now and know that specifically this is, um, this is um, um, trypanosomy assist, then we have to look deeper. So they depend, and, and, and I say this from the onset, that there's a form, the Gambian type or trypanosoma bruse gabiense causes a chronic, that is for a long time, a slow and chronic infection. And this leads to sleeping sickness. However, the trypanosoma bruse rodensiense, that isn't very acute. There's a rapid progress. And this one damages a lot of the heart muscles, a lot of the cardiac, a lot of the heart muscles and causing uh, some cardiac problems. And this one, somebody will die within weeks or months at least. At, at latest. Uh, but the one that you talking about, bruse gambiense, that one is a chronic and slow. That might take years, years, okay? Yeah, so it depends with which type of, uh, of um, the trypanosomes we're talking about. If it's caused by trypanosoma bruse, gabiense, slow chronic sleeping sickness, if it is bruse rodensiese, 
then we expect something very acute and mostly having cardiac complications. So in terms of stages or phases, what do you expect in terms of the progression of the disease? So we have basically three main stages. We have the primary or the chunker stage, and then uh, we have the blood stage, basically in the systemic illness, and then we have finally the cerebral stage, sleeping sickness stage. So th this, th this is under the assumption uh, that actually we are dealing with maybe the type that will, is chronic and will take time, okay? So let's look at stage by stage. So this one primary stage, this occurs immediately, basically immediately after, after now that the bite has taken place. Now, since the bite is, is at the site of your, since the bite is directly on your skin, then, um, it, then that one is basically uh, the first area of having issues. So that is a primary stage. So when you have the bite, that it will form some sort of a nodule, okay, at the side of the bite. Then this nodule is what now lasts and becomes like a chunker, okay. So you might see some lesions on the skin, okay. So, however, this only occurs in, in mostly Europeans, but it's rare in Africans, but it's not something that might not be seen, it can be seen. So, that is the very first stage. So, once now the parasite now gets into the blood, we go into the blood stage. So here it takes time. Remember, we said once the blood, once the trypanosomes are inside the blood, or in the lymph, they start multiplying. Okay, this multiplication makes them so many, and now leads and spreads everywhere in the body, or in the lymph. So this leads to fever, anemia, body weakness. Now, because also your spleen is trying to clean up your, your blood and everything, and and lymph lymph nodes are trying to clean up your lymph. Um, because of now they're fighting the, 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 the antigen, which is the trypanosomes in this place. Uh, uh, and these uh, trypanosomes are multiplying and multiplying. So the spleen is overworked, then we might have some sort of spleen enlargement, spleen omegaly, and lymph nodes may also be enlarged. Uh, uh, then the cervical lymph nodes is mostly common, okay? So the lymph nodes are, um, are enlarging, then we have um, basically a large nodule okay uh, so there is a common the, the, the basically the um, these these trypanosomes usually have a high affinity of basically going to the brain and that that is basically why we usually have the sleeping sickness and coma and other things also so as they are heading there we have cervical lymph nodes just below the neck around the neck region so as the lymph is filtering all this there so we mostly have the cervical lymph nodes becoming bigger and bigger, okay? So, and that is, leads to a common sign, which is called the winter bottom sign, okay? I'll show you the picture. So other than, apart from that, we have uh, some brushes. We might have the liver also enlarging and spleen also enlarging, that we talked about splenomegaly, poor appetite, impotence and uh, menstrual irregularities and heart failures because sometimes it it goes to the heart so normally if it is we're talking about the the east african type the the rodentiaceae, yes, then we expect them to have some sort of heart failure or cardiac complications so this is what we're talking about in terms of um the winter bottom sign these are cervical lymph node another one here uh, they have been enlarged because of basically the, the process we've talked about and 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 this is a common sign classical sign basically for for um the trypanosomiasis so the cerebral stage which is the last one so this is the terminal stage of trypanosomiasis and what happens is that now the the the, the trypanosomes have been able to overcome the the immunity or the the immune response we're having and they invade the brain and as they invade the brain, we have some sort of gradual deterioration. So you'll start with a coma. You'll start basically with a convulsion, maybe local signs like hemiplegia, facial pulses. And then this will graduate into sleeping now during the day. And you become very weak. Then they start sleeping during the day. But now at night, they don't sleep. They become very restless. Okay, that is the, now the picture I showed you. So they become very restless during the night. So as the disease progress, they, they become severely ill, then they go into a coma, and then finally, if not treated, they can die, okay? So that is basically the process.
okay, of the cerebral stage. So this is the, basically the last stage. So how, how does this disease get diagnosed? The, the common one, the common um, diagnostic criteria is just simple, microscopic examination of the chunk of flu fluid, okay? So where you had the chunk, they can just take a fluid from there and, 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 and see the trypanosomes. Or because you say that the, um, the chunk is not common in every, in every person, in, for example, in Africa, they can just take a blood sample, do a microscopy. So whether a wet blood smear or thick blood smear, what they want to see is the buffy coat in the trypanosomes. Okay, they can also do a serological test where they look at the, anti, uh, the antibodies against these antigens or these trypanosomes. Then they can just also do a lymph node aspiration, especially like in the cervical, if you have a winter bottom sign, and they can just asp aspirate the lymph node and get the lymph and, and look at it through the microscope to see these trypanosomes. So in terms of treatment, treatment is, uh, okay, by the way, this is one of the diseases that is classified as neglected tropical diseases. So no major advancements in terms of drugs. Some of these drugs were, were invented a long time ago. They are, they are old drugs, okay, therefore, these drugs are mostly, they're highly toxic, okay? And by the way, as the, as the patients are given my, most of the time, uh, they're even crying. It's very, very painful and highly toxic, okay? Highly toxic to the point that when some of them are injected, um, maybe through the veins and others, through the veins, um, you can't do that several times, okay? Because it even causes phlebitis, okay? And, and you, it's a, it's um, it, it these drugs are highly toxic. So anyway, the drugs of choice mostly are suramine, pentamidine, melasoprol, okay, and nitrofurazone. But the most common ones are these three: suramine, pentamidine, melasoprol. Okay. So, the prevention and control is basically we think of how this whole thing happens. So, but if we uh, give a prophylaxis sort of like an in injection of pentamidine it might protect against cabians infection for six months and normally this is common for wildlife personnel the ones working in the bush because they are at higher risk okay so normally they get prophylaxis of pentamidine however if it is in an area where you stay and there's a lot of bush just do bush clearing so that these flies these flies are not around and also use fly traps, the ones that you've talked about. And I, and I told you that what they use is they put, um, they put um, the urine, okay, and which attracts the SSA fly. So this one, use of bait traps and uh, baited uh, fly, fly traps have an efficacy of 95% at reducing this population, which is a good thing, okay? And 5% is not bad. Okay, so thank you very much. I hope you've understood something about um, um, Trypanosomiasis is an interesting topic, um, especially if you see uh, these patients who get trypanosomiasis. So it's a disease that normally nowadays people don't talk so much about uh, because also of the reduction of the population of CSF fly and other things. Uh, but it's good to know that this is one of the vector-borne diseases that are out there, especially in the tropics. Okay, thank you.